so goddamn rich. I think it's time to blow this thing, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Fucking rich. I want my fucking money. I got dual audio, that probably sounded like shit. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you to see my uh, Daniel Day Lewis sweater. <laughs> Let me show goddamn rich. I think it's time to blow this thing. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Getting fucking rich. I want my fucking money. Griffin, I want my fucking money. Yo, motherfucker. You gotta get the the other the other song, boss. The other. To get the Gary Gensler song one time. Gary Gensler song? Alright. It's a short one, it's like 30 seconds. I'll pop it out. Oh. The Gary Gensler song? Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Hang on a second. My bad. Let's get the Gary Gensler song. Gary Gensler. I want my fucking money. 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 I want my fucking money. 
want my fucking money. Gary Gensler. I want my fucking money. I want it all. Yes, sir. Let's go. Gary Gensler. I want my fucking money. I want my fucking money. I want my fucking money. Gary Gensler. I'll wait. I want my fucking money. Where long money? Money. I want my fucking money. Where's my fucking money? You got that right, man. I think the community is here to stay, man. Investors are not going to leave just because they're making us wait. That's for damn sure. At least not the majority of them. Not the ones that really understand what's happening. I think the majority of people are completely fed up with the manipulation and are willing to wait as long as needed. What the fuck's going on? How's everybody in the think tank today? Live in the dream. <laughs> My man. You fucking better be. What the fuck we got here? Our favorites. These are all meme stocks. Meme stocks that ran in February after AMC and GameStop went position close only and after the executive order extended by Biden on, uh, in early February extended the, an executive order for Chinese military company collateral through June sorry, May 27th of 2021. The movements of stocks like AMC and GameStop caused reverberations throughout the entire stock market. Think of it as shock waves, tsunamis after an earthquake. AMC and GameStop were a massive fucking earthquake that happened in January of 2021. And not long after, we saw many, many meme stocks run thousands and thousands of percentage points. OcuGen Inc. on February 8th, 2021 ran 5,259%. BioNanogenomics. 2,894% on February 16th. Some other ones were a little bit healthier, 40%, 264% for Hexo, 121% for FSD Pharma. Vaxart ran 347% on February 2nd. Innovio, 56%. What else we got? Tilray, one of our favorite weed stocks. 1,083 fucking percent. Guys, did I tell you what I think lately? I think we're going to be so fucking rich. Majority of people that get this money are not going to know what the fuck to do with it. Check this out. Viking Therapeutics, 74%. Aro, 328% on February 10th. STEM, 414% on February 17th. Get the goddamn money printer out, Jerome Powell. Blink Charging on February 9th, 678%. Organigram. Stock ticker OGI, 400% run. From a penny stock to $4.80. Unity, 137% close.
Clovis, 100%, February 8th. Ocean Power, 215%, February 9th. Orbital, 1,250%, February 16th. Starting to get the picture here, people. Jibo, 1,388%. On February 10th, CPS Technologies, ticker CPSH, 1,419% on February 16th. Let's see. Eric Harrison, how to tell when big banks have lost the handle? My friend, big banks lost the handle a long time ago. That's the reason for the ever increasing reverse repurchase program which is basically a bailout that occurs every single day by the federal reserve the for those of you that are unaware the rrp rate was at 0.05 percent recently liquidity has been so dry that the federal government has increased the rrp i'm sorry i, sh I, sh I take that back the federal reserve has increased the reverse repurchase program uh, payout from 0.05 to 0.3%. That's an increase of 0.25%, a quarter of a percentage point. That's 25 basis points. So now every day, instead of getting 0.05 on almost $2 trillion, these banks are getting 0.30 on almost $2 trillion. Every single day. But I think the question that you were asking, Eric, regarding about when big banks have lost their hand, the handle, you're going to see it in the stock market, without a doubt, and it's going to be something that the plunge protection team is not going to be able to, not going to be able to call a mulligan on every time. Aurora Cannabis, February 10th, 385 percent. Kronos Group, 168. Canopy Growth, 187. BioLays, 400% on February 9th. Sensionics, 1,310% on February 16th. Foresight Autonomous, 1,079% on February 10th of 2021. All of these directly related to the ETF baskets in which AMC and GameStop were held. Top ships, 256% on February 12th. Right? Look at Guardian Health Services, GHSI, a 500% run up. That's pretty intense. That's pretty fucking intense. And the list goes on. Caster Maritime. CTRM. Man, I remember trading that stock a long time ago. Yeah, February 11th, that thing went up 1,341.67%. Absolutely fucking nuts. Absolute madness. Thanks, Jam. Good looking out. Check out my man Holger over here in Germany. Always dropping the fire. Fantastic post regarding uh, inflation and I'm sorry on real yields. This is the uh, ten year bond yields for Germany. Negative six point six five. Counting for inflation. Oh, you can't see that. My bad. I didn't realize how low that fucking thing went and that you couldn't see it on my screen down there. Way down here in the negatives is the German real yield uh, for 10-year bonds accounted for inflation. You tell me you think banks are not fucked already? They are. They just keep getting bailouts every single day by the Federal Reserve and the Plunge Protection Team. What do we say to old Yeller? Get the fuck off my stock market. 
Stop spending my hard-earned tax dollars against us. Oh, there we are. Man, fuck the PPT. <laughs> fuck the PPT. That's right. Fuck the plunge protection team. Uh, Pantheon comes on in about 30 minutes. And if you guys are not following uh, my man Pantheon on YouTube, type in Pantheon AMC and subscribe. Pantheon is the man. He is always posting. He has a, a daily radio show. It's a podcast. It's on YouTube. Whoops. It's on YouTube. Type in Pantheon AMC. He does a daily radio show every night at uh, midnight Eastern Standard. Sorry. Oh, no, look, he's on there right now. Let's jump in there. So apparently it started at 11. I thought that it started at midnight because it said midnight, but I'm not in Eastern Time. I'm in Central Time, so I may have seen it incorrectly. So make sure you guys follow Pantheon Radio, all right? Uh, type in Pantheon AMC. You will not be disappointed. He does two, three, four, five-hour streams. Now, you don't have to look at the screen. You can listen to it on your your you know earbuds at work or whatever in your vehicle while you're driving and the guy just talks amc and due diligence and macroeconomics and i dig it i think he's doing a great job we need more more people to discuss youtube uh, to discuss on youtube it's not funny. regarding what's I mean, going on with amc lived through that at the time let's that listen in funny i just i'm just seeing so many parallels and when i'm when i'm not seeing parallel to the things that we haven't come to yet and that's where i'm trying to tell this story bring forward this information so people can start putting their minds towards if a lot of the similar events took place leading to this when we do have so yeah, right here he's talking about the S&P 500 index uh, at the time of the you know the crash uh, exactly which one I'm not sure I would suspect he's talking about 2008 uh, because this is in, in October here but again he brings up a lot of different subjects you know regarding SIBO suspending trading CME Chicago uh, Chicago Board of Options Exchange at 11.45 suspended trading. Uh, Chicago Metals Exchange uh, suspended the trading at 12.15, and then they both reopened at 1.04 p.m. So people are going to have to be, you guys are going to have to be aware and ready for halts and suspensions and things that you do not think are fair and do you not think are legal because chances are they may or may not be fair, but they're probably legal. So we've got to play the game. We've got to dance with the devil, so to speak. And you've got to be ready for any kind of manipulation and fuckery uh, in the markets. So definitely stay sharp. Have whatever ours is going to look like, right? And it won't be a one-day drop. It'll be or, or, or a suspension or something on, on these memes. All right, we'll, we'll jump in. We'll have Pantheon come on sometime soon because uh, the guy is great. I'm actually subscribed myself. I jump in there every now and then. Definitely check him out. But anyway, let's scoot back right over here. Um, one thing I want to talk to you guys about before we discuss any sort of TA whatsoever. If you're not aware, Vladimir Putin pegged the ruble to gold. This pretty much wiped out the utility of the U.S. dollar and the usefulness, the need for U.S. Treasury notes. U.S. Treasury notes are, are being sold off like hotcakes and Europe is now going to need to pay for gold, uh, oil in gold either gold or rubles they cannot pay in u.s dollars their contract stipulates it's got to be in euros but that's probably not going to happen and please keep in mind everybody that oil does not just consist of oil for your motor and gasoline for your car it also helps produce diesel and Oil is a different form of natural gas. Natural gas is a liquefied form of the 
of, I'm sorry, a, a gaseous form of the liquid oil, which is used in everything from plastics to electric vehicles. So paying in euros or not being able to pay in euros is going to seriously impact the banks and countries that have to pay Russia. They will have no choice but to pay in rubles or in gold. And they're not going to want to pay in gold. They're not going to want to fucking pay in gold because gold is a precious metal. It is a tangible resource. And all of the financial experts know, in my opinion, and I'm not a financial advisor, but I believe that all financial experts know about the heavy shorting in precious metals such as silver and gold and expect the squeeze to occur in the silver and gold markets either prior, during, or after the AMC and GameStop squeeze. Let that sink in for a second. Dave's not here. Don't talk shit about my guy, Adam Aaron. Adam Aaron is a, an amazing CEO, plain and simple. And I will debate anybody who wants to discuss otherwise. One more thing. The pawn shop rule. The pawn shop rule has been extended. Some people are posting FUD, stating that it's being extended because they don't want us to squeeze. It, well, yeah, while that may be true, they don't want, uh, the government does not want us to squeeze. The pawn shop rule is being extended not because of that reason. Uh, sorry, it, it was canceled not because of that reason, but because it needs to happen after the stock market crashes. On March 25th, the NSCC withdrew the proposed rule change SR NSCC 2021-010, also known as the Pawn Shop Rule. The Pawn Shop Rule was going to allow the NSCC and the DTC to trade a bag of collateral from a short hedge fund that is over leveraged to another bank or prime broker or short hedge fund in exchange for money. This would allow them to close out their short positions on the liquidate the short hedge fund that has been margin called or liquidated without collapsing the stock market however due to the vast number of short hedge funds that are absolutely fucked the DTC and the NSCC realized hey if we do this everybody else is going to start closing their short positions either before or during the, or, or during the time that we're doing so and we're going to be held left holding a bag of worthless collateral that's going to continue to lose in value when other short hedge funds try to beat the liquidated fund to the punch and close out for a cheaper price. Which, as we saw just a few days ago, is going to get really high really fast. Cash, you with me, brother? Oh, yeah. Good. I wanted to ask you a couple things. Did you see Dave Lauer's post or response to the skyrocketing prices on GameStop and AMC when it was halted yesterday, uh, you know, yesterday or a couple days ago, a few days ago now? No. It was really good. You've got to see this. And I'm actually over on his page looking for it now because I've got to find it. Okay. Examining the timestamps on certain trades, uh, it was found that uh, CBO, uh, Chicago Board of Options Exchange, uh, the AJAX Exchange that they own, was publishing quote updates uh, for 35 milliseconds after GameStop was halted. And that was the day before yesterday on March 29th. 
And they were absolutely crazy prices. And we know that they were retail investor orders because they were ridiculous numbers, like $420 and 69 cents. So the technology that they're using is, is, is so worthless in the speed at which it cancels the orders that it's, it's kind of breaking the entire system. Dave Lauer said, I got a lot of questions yesterday about Robinhood alerting users that high-priced GameStop calls were in the money. This happened right as GameStop was halted in uh, LULD. Not sure what he means by LULD. Uh, looks like Bats was slow to clear their quote. Hey, boss, the LULD just means limit up, limit down. Thank you. I knew it was something simple. Thanks. Appreciate that, brother. Yep. Limit up, limit down. That's why I love the think tank. Good man. Here's a few E-Trade notifications for alerts and asks being hit. $450 for AMC, $150 for AMC, $200, $650 for AMC. check this out if this is the post I'm hoping well here you go so when the best bids on BATS started dropping right the bat system over the course of 190 updates it reached zero dollars and cleared around this timestamp 9:37 a.m. Uh, the best ask on bats started climbing and over the course of 870 updates reached the peak of four hundred and forty eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars at nine thirty seven a.m. with fifty seven milliseconds it looks like fifty seven hundredths of a second and then finally at nine thirty seven fifty seven point four six etc the best bid and ask were both cleared for that exchange this made the NBBO cleared the national best bid and office offer cleared that means they were canceling trades guys they were I mean they were canceling uh, trades and, and prices that people had put in. I'll explain more in depth. I'll try to get more layman if I can. Uh, sorry if it doesn't make sense. It's just the way their system works. It's it's purposely confusing. My man. The last six days, GameStop traded one and a half times the float, 96 million shares, and AMC traded over 1.6 times the entire float, 830 million shares. I don't know about you, but I'm not fucking selling. Here you go. Does that look like market maker trades to you? At 9.37 a.m., $420.69. Trades for AMC being canceled off the bats order system. Why? Because nobody's fucking selling this thing, as my man Jackson Hunter likes to say. Shout out to Jackson Hunter. Make sure you guys follow my YouTube if you don't already. There was a lot of GameStop and AMC stuff that I sometimes don't get to. This is not your standard order to get the price to trade sideways. You know, this is not pinning. Nobody was selling the stock between $30 and $420.69. That's why the price got up here. And that's why they had to start canceling trades, halt trading for both AMC and GameStop. That's fucking phenomenal. In my eyes, there is no more clear indication that is necessary other than AMC and GameStop going up hundreds and thousands, hundreds or thousands of percentage points in January of 2021, June of 2021, uh, you know, and then running again for no fucking reason and hitting $420.69 before trades were halted and dark pool uh, sales short selling occurred, bringing the stock price down of AMC at 16%. When the trading was halted, the short sale restriction limit for AMC was off, was missed by one penny. 
So it was halted when the short sale restriction list reached or just before it reached uh, effectiveness and they halted trading one penny before that occurred. The level of manipulation here is crystal clear. And a small squeeze and a small movement like AMC moving due to high croft mining squeezing because of all the good news and the huge influx of money that AMC did, uh, you know, contributed to that company to keep them alive and took over a vast majority of their thousands of ounces of gold and silver that are in those fucking mines. That created a squeeze on Highcroft. The same shorts that were shorting Highcroft short AMC and GameStop. AMC and GameStop are in the same ETF basket along with many other stocks like COS, Progenity, Sundial, MMAT. The list goes on. Ocugen Pharmaceuticals, the one that ran 5,307%. All these other stocks, Castor Maritime, 1,341%. Okay, the, the list goes on. Fuel Cell Energy, 1,200%. Again, look, these are all February 5th through February 16th of 2021. That's after AMC and GameStop ran due to the executive order that was implemented and then extended by Biden, which removed the effectiveness and then returned the effectiveness of Chinese military company collateral. Yep, so both AMC and GME hit limit up, limit down bands and were paused. Uh, they spiked up. Here's a, a the quick, quick answer right here. Tier 1 securities, those are penny stocks, OTC, tier 2 NMS, three buck, under 3 bucks, not that. We're looking here at basically a 20, the, the timing here. This isn't even the one I was looking for that shows you when they occur within a 15 minute time period. This one just gives you a price band percentage, which so I'm not a big fan of this chart at all, to be honest with you. It's not the one I was looking at previously. Here's another example. I have three call options, said uh, this super stonk. Redditor, one with a $510 strike price. A call option with a $510 strike price, for those of you that don't know, is, the, is a contract that gives you the ability to buy 100 shares of GameStop, for example, at $510 per share. And he says, just before the halt, I got notifications from my broker that all three options were in the money. Before the halt was lifted, I was notified that all three were no longer in the money. How much more theft are we going to put up with? How much more blatant can you get? These idiots seem to have forgotten why there was a French Revolution. At some point, people will decide enough is enough. I think that's why the majority of people are here. I think all of us have decided that enough's enough, and we're going to do whatever we have to do to see some real change. Not because we're dying for the change, but because the manipulation is not something that we're willing to live with. And the majority of people have put their foot down. Check it out. Here's a... You know, we're, we're still... You see that with almost every topic in the news today, you know? There's all these different groups that are tired of the lies, the manipulation. It doesn't matter what it's about, the stock market, COVID, you know, like anything. The Ukraine incident. Here's orders going up from between $182.79. There was no order above that all the way to $275 at 9.37.57 a.m. That is why they had to halt it. They halted it 
when nothing else was happening on the stock market. What do you think is going to happen when the entire stock market's collapsing? All sorts of assets are going to be losing value. And they're not going to be able to concentrate. Market makers, short hedge funds, prime brokers, your friendly neighborhood is the abusing bank is no longer going to be able to focus on AMC and GameStop while other meme stocks are running due to liquidations and collateral becoming completely fucking invaluable. Meanwhile, other assets are losing their value quickly. Right. Plain and simple. Kenny, tell me you didn't close without telling me you didn't close the market. There's GameStop for you. There's the one minute candle. For about 180 all the way up to 360, 370-ish. That's a beautiful sight right there. So actually, when when that occurred, it, it gave me a good indication that uh, the shorting was going to continue again. That, that made it pretty clear to me. China tech stocks fall as U.S. signals tough stance on delisting. Yeah, that's going to happen. Baidu, Baidu is going to be delisted most likely as well as a bunch of other stocks. The man C3PO says, uh, here's a 30-minute order block support on AMC. Uh, he suspects that it may be taken to sweep the block for liquidity and hopefully provide enough to validate his Elliott Wave theory. So it looks like he's mapping out liquidity points uh, currently, and there's the order block that they're probably going to be testing next here is between 2580 and 2450 or so. Uh, if I'm the way that I'm understanding this currently I know my man C3PO was uh, bullish the last few days on AMC but I was actually telling him that I did not believe that it was going to be that it was not going to be able to continue upwards uh, after the $34 uh, limit was hit on AMC and both of these were, were pretty much closed down So, yeah, this is the accumulation of orders from financial institutions and central banks. Uh, so he sees a huge accumulation of orders here, it looks like, in that uh, 2450 to 2580 range. That might serve as a good support level. Um, but again, I've also seen that we have kind of been following the SPY, and that leads me to believe that... We may have a further retracement in the price before we actually have an actual squeeze, a short squeeze. Uh, thank you, NYC Illust, for posting this. Uh, somebody messaged Weeble asking if AMC and GameStop are on the HTB list. And Daisy from Weeble eService replied that, uh, yes, they are currently on the HTB. And they gave an attachment referring to the shortability and its margin rate, if marginable. So it is hard to find shares to borrow on AMC and GameStop. That is for sure. <laughs> you guys had a good time in the Discord, huh? <laughs> That's great. C3PO, shout out, brother. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate you. 
Thanks for, uh, you know, helping us out with the TA, man. Good looking out. Go here. And thanks to Raindrop for supporting the channel and for posting his badass pictures of him and his fucking cocks. <laughs> I dig it. Good looking out, dude. Let's see. Uh, it looks like not money advice says in the chat. I only got alert that my AMC $40 call was in the money. I didn't know GME. My GME $510 call was also in the money. How much potential gains did they steal from me again? Hey, man, I hate to say it. I'm sorry, but it's true, my friend. It's something we've got to deal with. That's why you've got oh, to... Welcome to the club. Yeah, welcome to the fucking club. It's something we've got to deal with. We've got to be able to understand that the manipulation is real, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But... You're not going to just see it in the middle of no, like out of nowhere. AMC and GameStop are not going to run when nothing's happening. The stock market is fucking, was, is going to, you know, high, high levels at the moment due to this uh, fake pump that we're seeing with, uh, you know, Fed money. AMC and GameStop are going to go with it. And then... They're going to go back down because they're going to keep shorting it. They cannot let AMC get past $30. Plain and fucking simple. Yeah, the media is bought and paid for. That's for damn sure, man. I'm going to try and log on to my IVKR account real quick so I can get my my charts up let's see if I'll be able to Smoke and a blunt. Sounds like a good time. I need some whiskey. on the merch store, merch shop if anybody wants some. I think there's a link in the description. I don't push it too hard, but I got the merch. I was like, oh man, I want that hat so bad. Cash, you got one too, right, bro? Oh, yeah. That's solid. Did you get the, the black one or the, the black and red bill, like that one? I have the black one. Sick. Yeah, I grabbed the black red one and the navy blue one. Grabbed a few things. Got that fucking blanket, too. I'm like, oh, I'm going to hang this blanket up here. I like this thing a lot. It's one of those micro fleece, super plush. says Eric. I don't know, man. I'm not a financial advisor. Well, I've done several videos on the executive order, uh, so I won't cover it in depth, but I've told you guys several times that it, it made collateral worthless on January 27th, 
and then Biden extended it a few days later, which is what caused the run-up in January. And then it happened again. Uh, he extended it through May 27th, of course. On the May 27th, AMC started running pretty healthy. And on June 3rd, I'm sorry, June 3rd when AMC, June 2nd when AMC got the $72. On June 3rd, it was extended again through June 3rd of 2022 for one year, 365 days. And that allowed the market makers and hedge funds to start shorting them again. And that's why they stopped moving again in June of 2021. I think the S&P just put in its top, man. Let me turn this fucking music off. Cash, what do you think, man? You think we're reaching the top of this current pump on the SPY? Maybe. Um, I think what the market is doing right now, it's a, just having like a slight pullback. I, I think it's possible that it's topped off. Um, we were looking at 458 on the SPY. And for those of you that don't know where the SPY is, the proxy, basically, for the S&P 500. That's the wrong SPY. Let me go over here. I'll pop it up over to my other screen in a moment here. I just got to... Also, for those of you that are unaware, uh, China Evergrande was suspended for seven days. And then uh, they resumed trading on Monday. Uh, they opened up 6% down for the day. And within 15 minutes, they were down another 13%. So they were delisted again, suspended again for another seven days. So I have it here at the top of my list. And I love, love, love seeing the 333 ticker for China Evergrande uh, group completely fucking suspended. That is that is phenomenal in my opinion. Oh man, the hilarious they can't make up their mind. <laughs> uh, Aaron Salentine, June third, twenty twenty two, the executive order expires. And previously it expired May twenty seventh. AMC started moving several days before the twenty seventh, started moving really hard the twenty seventh through the second getting to $72 on June 2nd, and on June 3rd, first thing in the morning, Biden extended it, therefore allowing short hedge funds to bring the price back down from 72 a high of $78, $79, all the way down to the $50 range, and then lower and lower from there. So the reason I'm telling people this is so that you guys are aware mm -hmm. as to the reasoning that I believe, that I am confident in of uh, the reasoning that we're seeing what happened on AMC and GameStop. And uh, anybody can come up with other conclusions. I'll be more than happy to listen. But uh, that is the best answer that I have been able to come up with. And I don't see anybody else coming up with this fucking answer because I really don't think that the majority of people understand it. No offense. Oh, let's take a look at this bitch here on the one day chart. It's too close. That's better. There we go. That's a lot better there. Like, look at this crazy ending to the day here. A massive pump from 457.11 to 
58.73 in the last minute of uh, five minutes of trading here. Of course. The market makers treat the SPY the same as many other stocks, including AMC and GameStop. Uh, very often, the majority of the time, AMC and GameStop runs with the markets. The only times that they will run opposite is when margin calls happen. Look at this massive gap up we had here overnight. Um, you know, from 454 all the way up to 460. That is a huge, massive move. This upward movement here on the SPY, when you look at it, let's get the Heikinashi. When you look at how steep this movement upwards was on the SPY, it is completely unhealthy. All right. Um, Listen, they're focused on keeping this thing above 458 for two days in a row. And they continue to close above 458. So we got to look at it. And as long as the market is above the, the moving averages and continues to close daily above the 458 mark, uh, it, it's, it's really wanting to push higher. I truly believe that, that it is. Uh, I think the next target here would be a downward retracement towards 465. Uh, sorry, an upward movement towards 465, and then a downward retracement from that. But we would have to have a lot of continuously good news for that to happen. The thing is that tomorrow, March 1st, 2022, Europe is going to start having to pay for oil in rubles or gold so i'm what not mean April. So I'm, good April. say that again April. are you sure yeah i thought that was tomorrow bro Shit. april april's yeah. in uh like two days yeah okay i thought that was on friday april 1st sorry it's 12.09 a.m., so my day just changed from the 30th to the 31st. My apologies. Okay. <laughs> April 1st. You could pay. Yeah, it, it is technically tomorrow for me, and it is the, the day after tomorrow for cash as of right now. So, yeah, we're both right. <laughs> Damn, boss. You must have smoked a lot. <laughs> well, look, the time did change, and so it is tomorrow. <laughs> it's now 12.10 in the True. morning, the 31st. True. So tomorrow, April 1st, like my man Cash said, banks are going to have to start paying for Russian oil, natural gas, in rubles or gold. That could potentially cause some serious shaky movements in the market. In a lot of trouble. You know, a lot of people be like, think that because it's kind of warm now that Europe is going to be fine without Russian oil and gas and natural gas and propane, crude, and diesel and diesel exhaust fluid. What the fuck? What do you think, Cash? How's Europe? Yeah, man, in the wing again. Hmm. Not looking good at all. Yeah, one second here. Everything will be more expensive. Everything. Yeah. So there's a potential that we see a pullback tomorrow uh, on these markets. Uh, and then could continue back upwards if everything works out okay in that situation. And we could start pushing that 465 to 470, 471 mark. That would be, you know, you know the market wants to keep pushing higher with the liquidity that's getting pumped into it. The, the, the amount of money that the federal 
the United States uh, Fed, Federal Reserve has uh, 8.95 billion, no, 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 8.95 trillion dollars on their balance sheet. Trillion with a T. All right, almost $9 trillion of equities and bonds. 30% of that is bonds. I'm sorry. 30% of that is U.S. Treasuries. Yeah, I guess. So that's an accurate statement. Excuse me. I'm going off the top of my head here, not reading anything. So excuse me if I make a mistake. I am human. I will occasionally make an error, but I will always try to correct myself. No mistakes. Can't be doing Not that. allowed. <laughs> we uh, you. Uh, but again, finishing below 460 again tomorrow would be another rejection because we've had two days now where we've been reject rejected on the 29th from 461 and then again, damn, and then again uh, today, I'm sorry, March 30th, at 3.45 p.m. over at 461.71, there was a massive rejection and a push downward. Uh, it really moved up too far, too fast for it to be a healthy movement on the SPY. Uh, and it can only go as fast as people are willing to you know, continue to buy. And if there's no more upward movement, uh, and if people don't believe enough, people don't believe in, in buying at 460, 461, 462 on the spy to get back closer to all time highs. It's not uh, people are OK with missing that opportunity because they don't consider they don't see much of much more of an upward movement. So the market makers and the hedge funds and the banks are getting no retail support on buying above the $460 level at the SPY. How about my TA guys? What do you guys think? Let me see if C3PO's got anything to, to say in the chat well, since, since we got it up. That's who I'm waiting on to start talking. He ain't really said much. It's all right. Man's busy. He stopped typing for a second. Where's my boss? There we are. He says one second. Yeah, no worries. We ain't got one second. We need it now. No, my sanctions. Will not cause the most no. Thank you, Cash. Yeah, I don't think the sanctions alone will cause a mother of all short squeezes. It's going to be a conglomeration of issues, a huge number of catalysts that are going to snowball. And we've already been seeing it for a long time. All right, you guys have been seeing it for a long time. One after the next, it's COVID issues, supply chain, inflation, hyperinflation, oil prices, natural gas, wheat, food, you name it. It's going to keep happening. Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, Afghanistan, United States holding nine, $9 billion of Afghanistan funds. Same thing with Russia. America and, and Western countries, NATO countries, are trying to, you know, sanction Russian gold. Yeah, but now the petrodollars may challenge and we may lose our world reserve currency. I do think that this is the beginning the, or should I say the end of globalization and the end of the global of the worldwide currencies? It's the beginning well, of regional currency again. Yeah, and after they crash, they'll nationalize everything. You mean Russia or the United States? Well, every country will nationalize. 
their metal and mining. Yeah, yeah, that's most likely. Yeah, getting getting above four sixty one nineteen, I think, is still the number one goal of the spy and the market makers on the spy. Uh, yesterday's high was four hundred and sixty two. I'm sorry, March 29th's high was four hundred and sixty two dollars and seven cents on the spy, and it was rejected. So two days in a row, uh, we've seen this happen. And I, th I right. think it's going in for a third retest tomorrow. So, C3PO said, oh, well, matter of fact, you might as well just post that up because he has a chart. Let's take a look at the Elliott wave from C3PO. Thanks for posting it up, brother. All right, my man, looking at the spy right here. Tells us uh, so. Here is his analysis on the ES, uh, as he finds it's more effective to chart. Uh, he sees a rejection off the pitchfork midline, uh, which will be right here, and this is the beginnings of what looks like a wave four correction uh, on the Elliott wave theory. The the wave four correction be a downward movement. Um, under 4, 449 or 4449 on the SPX, and then an upward bounce again after that. So uh, being that wave two is the deep retrace, uh, I can see a shallow retrace to the white line, dot 382, then a wave five completing to all time highs, fake out like Bitcoin 69K. I think it's plausible. I think it's plausible. That's the retest they're going to shoot for. Uh, I think if the rejection occurs, though, I don't know why, but I have a feeling that it's going to continue to trend back downwards here and retest the lower zones. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Thanks a lot for posting that up. C3PO, thank you very much, brother. Good man. Where are we at here? I got another. Switch it up. Let's get into IWM, huh? What's going on here? She doesn't want to. She says no. Good man. Yeah, D, we appreciate that. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, everybody for your, in the think tank for all your help and support. And everybody in the stream as well. Thank you very much. Not even gonna lie to you, I'm kind of late to the party. Man, you're always fucking late. <laughs> I know, bro. <laughs> I be trying to be job? early, yo. <laughs> 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 always got to make an entrance. That's going to be the last thing I show you guys here in a minute. Why am I not able to find IWM here? That is kind of obnoxious. If specialists are unable to operate, a collapse in the financial system around the world is certain. The orders were such a deluge that the specialist system, I'm afraid to say it, but it's true, failed. Because the specialists weren't going to take this kind of hit. They didn't have the money. For this is the same thing that we're seeing right now. 
with AMC and GameStop being halted, with the EdgeX system failing, same shit we saw in 87, just different technology. For this kind of hit. Before the opening on Tuesday, the Federal Reserve releases a statement Federal Reserve consistently And they called the banks and said, you've got to loan these market makers the money so they can pay for these positions. They had to tell the Federal Reserve to loan the banks the money to the market makers, to give the banks money to give to the market makers so they can buy their positions. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, before the start of trading, the CME Clearinghouse collects margin payments the from members to cover thing. Monday's losses. Because two CME Clearinghouse happen. members had not received the payments, fears emerged about the solvency of the CME. On the CBO floor, normally you hear this really loud, it's open outcry. So you hear this huge amount of noise nonstop, everybody screaming. This was just arguing. Everybody was arguing about prices. It was just arguing about what price we should open. In New York, Two-thirds of the specialist's $3 billion of buying power had vanished. Wow. Before the market opens, New York Stock Exchange Chairman John Phelan imposes a moratorium on computer trading. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. I need a beer. The market opens. 7% of stocks are closed for trading. Imbalances make it impossible for specialists to maintain orderly markets. The call basically went out for buyers, and you would hold up trading in a stock if it was going to open dramatically lower. The Fed stopgap measures kick in. The Dow shoots up 126 points in the opening minutes. And they opened up God, like almost limit. Eyes. They skyrocketed up on the opening. But the crisis is far from over. What happened is all the put buyers came in and bought puts. Now, I'm standing in the S&P 500 option pit. We're one of the designated primary market makers. We had a position on that was short major market index and long S&P 500 futures. By midday, 10 Dow stocks, accounting for more than half the weight of the Dow, are not open for trading. So the banks were getting extra credit uh, for whatever they needed. And the specialists too, but the specialists were afraid to use it because there was no bottom in sight. And so if there were no buyers, what are they gonna use this, <laughs> this money that they're gonna have to pay back uh, someday when, when <laughs> it was like throwing it out? The role of a specialist was, is to stand there and provide match buyer and seller. And when buyer and seller aren't there, to provide liquidity so the, the, the price swings don't get too, too wide. For refusing to buy stock from incoming sellers, some specialists are not acting as the buyer of last resort. But yes, buyer of last resort, and yes, realizing that the stock exchange and the SEC were the regulators of last resort as well, and they were going to be all over us if we didn't perform. We really couldn't trade. Positions or no positions, good amount of capital or not, it didn't matter. They were panicked. At that time, the rumors of the, that in fact, the market was going to close, that New yes. York was going to close, and more we heard that the Chicago Mercantile was going to close. The New York Stock Exchange, blah, the heart of the blah, world financial blah, markets, blah, was about to stop blah. beating. I think that would have sent a very, very bad message to not only public, uh, but institutional investors, that if you can't keep the marketplace open, it'll be even worse the, day, the next day, the day after, the day after that. So I think the idea was, was keep the exchange open, rotate around as they do in the options markets and, and other markets, and see how many stocks you could keep open and keep trading and see if they'd stabilize. The Fed's strategy has failed. <laughs> there is an absence of buy orders. Damn. You're frustrated the whole day because... The Fed is great I'll, at I'll failing. explain why. Because you're standing there on one side of the pit, and on the other side of the pit, they open up some puts that are $200 higher than they should be, and you're willing to pay, you're willing to sell them $100 or $200 lower, and you can't get any of them. The clearinghouses yes. would not let you trade. They were... The fires that they had to put out were so big that if you were... If you had no position, 
and you were not one of their problems, they didn't want you to be one of their problems. Thursday, it felt like we were out of business. Like it felt like they were just gonna shut the exchange down because there this, was no business. This the fear spreads to the right Chicago now. Mercantile Exchange. The market, just like in New York, kept going down and down. And I, I didn't know how and when or whether it would stop. The New York specialists widened their markets to the point where I saw stocks that were $40 bid offered at 50. But we're open. What would you like to do? Well, as someone comes in, a broker comes in and says, I'd like to buy these 40 calls, our question back to them was, which is rude to answer a question with a question, was, what's the market? Where is the stock trading? You tell me where the stock is, I'll tell you what the options are worth. So to me, I was pretty scared that this thing looks like it's melting down. And that would mean that at the CME, if we're still open, drop and go, you know, another 1929 here. And the market was closed. So what happens the rest of the day, it just goes straight up. With an influx of 150 contracts in the major market index, <laughs> the MMI rises. Since the... Closing the markets is going to fuck them. Plain and simple. Redler of T3Live.com. Scott Redler joins us. Stock technical Scott Redler's with us. It's Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Heard a lot about Marco Kalanovich and JP Morgan lately. He's the new Scott. I have. Oh, you evil clown. My uh, bizarro world, Marcel. Marco. By no means did we hit a bottom. Oh, People no. worried about the gas prices right. and I'm food prices. Them. We're in an unhealthy market. Yeah, By no them. means again are we at ghost, a bro. trading bottom. Okay, the consumers strangled. They're watching their housing prices go lower. They're watching their 401ks get diminished. They're spending That's higher prices than everything Marshall. in their lives. So we're in a bad environment. <laughs> and typically in environments like this, markets need to end in a, in a, in a dramatic way, I'm sorry to say. Then, oh, Dr. Doom, holy cow. Oh. Anyway, he was very bearish that so the market could go down 20 25%. Uh, so far, you've been vindicated, sadly so, some might say. But now you are not Dr. Doom, you are Dr. Opportunity. Our next guest was looking for a 20 to 25% uh, drop in the market. That was back in January. But I'm not sure that that July 15th low is the ultimate low of this you know, big bear market we're involved in right now. We go below 10,000 on the down. Yes, we can. I'm an American. I don't like when people are in pain. You know what? People start, should start taking accountability for their action. 1,200 was the July low intraday on the S&P. Will we retest? Level. The probabilities say we should. We think that potentially we're going to retrace over 50 percent and we're going to go back to those lows. At least this guy was and if we break those again. lows, we're in for that volatile six to eight week period where all excess is going to be squeezed out of the market. You're going to see poorly run hedge funds probably explode. We don't know if there's another brokerage firm that might go under. Right. There are a lot of unknowns. So right now, that's why you need to watch the price levels and have gauges to trade again. You got people telling you what is happening in the markets right now and things are in a, we are in a lot worse position both the value of our dollar the value of our bonds the value of our inflation the value of our salaries the value of our savings the value of our earnings are complete garbage and the united states gross domestic product uh, cannot sustain itself whatsoever without excessive quantitative easing printing of money. Plain and simple, that is its most basic as I can put the term. The thousand and yep. also a technical trader with t3live.com, 66 to 68 or somewhere. Anyways, that's about enough of that. Get rid of that shit. Let's take a look at the 10 year and the two year yield spread of the Treasury. 
it is 0 0.04. Zero point zero four is the difference between the two year treasury yield and the ten year. It was inverted yesterday. Anytime here, read this right here. The 10 to 2 te treasury yield spread is the difference between the 10 year and the two year rate. The approach, when it approaches zero, it signifies a flattening yield curve. A negative 10 to 2 yield spread has historically been viewed as a precursor to a recessionary period. A negative spread is it predicted every recession from 1955 through 2018. What has occurred six to 24 months before the recession occurs? It reached a high of 2.9 in 2011 and a low of negative 2.4 in 1980. Yeah, not looking great, is it? <laughs> it's not looking great at all. Yeah, collateral is really important, uh, Abdul. That's why the SPY is getting pumped so hard. Really, the collateral is the number one thing for these short hedge funds on AMC, okay? There's there's nothing that matters more to them. Excuse me, I'm lagging a little bit. Let me close one of these 300 windows that I have open. My IWM charts are not loading for some reason. IBKR is being a bitch. So I'll save those for next time. I'll save those for tomorrow. And then we'll talk about that. But I can still tell you what I saw. The QQQ move, move movement, let's just look it up over here, is complete shit. It's extremely, it was extremely fast. Uh, that's why we're seeing retracements now. From 318 on March 11th to 371 on March 29th. It's way, way too much. Uh, nobody has the, you know, any, any faith that this is going to continue to trend upwards. And so we've seen this jump here. But uh, from 371, we have been rejected multiple times. Three. One, two, three. And the only reason it's able to be maintained this high anyway is due to the liquidity that they continue to receive from the RRP. Here it is. Again, they are now giving more money. The Fed is now giving 0.3% instead of 0 0.05. Minimum bid rate is 0 0.5. Did it increase again? Can it be? Can it be? I'm going to keep looking. Let me dig a little bit. Now, now I'm on the case. I've got to find out for sure. And you know what? Here's the repo operations. Let's just go straight to that. Not sure what is showing up here. I also usually don't use this link to get there. There we go. 1.785. Oh, you can't see that. That's still 1.785 billion in daily RRP. December 31st was the all-time high, $1.904.5 billion. 
One billion nine hundred and four million. And now we are trending back upward. Why on December 31st? Because the banks had to finish cooking their books. And they piled on everything that they needed to to make everything look square. And then spent that liquidity back in the markets afterwards. Currently, they're holding 1.785 every day as of March 30th. And climbing. It's been climbing pretty steadily since the 25th. We had 1.8 billion on the 23rd. So it's going to be an interesting time. As this gets to 2 billion, it signifies more and more the impending collapse of the United States dollar, sadly. I hate to put it so bluntly, but they don't call me Boss Blunts just because I like to smoke weed. Because I'm pretty fucking blunt as well. There we go. Fred St. Louis Fed, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, they're showing 1.785. Take a look at this. It wasn't being used at all up until September 17th. Well, it was used previously to 2020, but September 17th is the date. September 17th, 2020, 2019 is the date that the Federal Reserve had to step in. And if we go back, we can actually look for it. It's right about here. It jumped from two billion to eighteen billion, almost nineteen billion in one day, and the uh, cost to bar or the cost to purchase and the cost to borrow, I believe, uh, went up to eleven percent. So the Fed had to step in, and in twenty twenty began quantitative easing, and then printing ridiculous amounts of money that has, due to the new regulations and the vast amounts of collateral that these guys have to hold on hand and cash assets in order to maintain their margin requirements from getting margin called on AMC, GameStop, and a fucking thousand other meme stocks. They must continue to print money and hold it somewhere uh, in their bank accounts because the top 34 banks in the world have to maintain over a billion dollars on hand at all times every single day. Thanks to the new CAT system. Also, make sure you guys are following AMC Bigums and Pantheon AMC if you're not already on, on YouTube. Definitely follow them. Check them out. Pantheon does a radio like a, every, every night almost, five nights a week. Does like a radio show kind of thing on podcasts that you can listen to. Uh, all AMC news. Edward says, I was watching a bit about the yield curve crash, and it was pretty interesting about when recession can and will occur, and it seems to be pretty soon. Yeah, you, you can watch every video. You can look at all the charts, look at all the data, Google it, check it out every way you can, and you're going to see one thing after the next is pointing to a fucking recession, a depression, and the Great Reset in which... The New World Order wants you to own nothing and be happy. I don't know about you, but I've got my fucking hedge for this repre recession. I've got my hedge for this depression. And I know where AMC and GameStop are going to take me. To those that are in AMC and GameStop, I'm not a financial advisor. But I do think that we're going to be filthy fucking rich. Yeah, fuck Klaus Schwab. Thank you. Fuck that asshole. He's a piece of shit. Klaus Schwab needs to burn in hell. Honestly, I'd rather not. But yeah, I get the sentiment. You know, I was about to say the same thing. I don't even care. <laughs>
I do. Gonna be so goddamn rich. Gonna be so goddamn rich. Okay, three, two, one. Have a great night, everybody. Rich. Have a great day. I want my fucking money. Thanks for your support. I want my fucking money. Thank you for your support, everybody. Appreciate you mods. Thank you to everybody in the Think Tank, uh, the Discord, the YouTube, Twitter. If you have any questions, shoot them my way. Uh, I'll answer a couple of questions. Right if you got a couple questions, I'll, I'll answer a few, uh, and then we're getting the fuck out of here. Just think, I don't want to shoot show my positions because I'm not trying to make anybody jealous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Martin, I heard that. I want my fucking money. You're an original, hey, aren't you? Make sure you're checking out Pantheon. Money. SRTY? I'll check it out. Okay. I got one question. Hey, Cash, what that money printer gonna stay? Yeah, it looks like SRTY is up 6% today. It's the Ultra Pro Short Russell 200 ETF. Um, they are definitely buying it hard. Uh, this causes downward pressure in the stock and selling it like they did hard on the 28th and 29th this will cause a lot of upward movement in stocks like AMC because this runs opposite to the Russell so good question that was a wonderful question uh, thanks so much everybody have a great night let me so goddamn rich go cash money yeah, T. And a boy. Okay, three, two, one. Wow. I want my fucking money. Sponsored by Miller Lite. Just kidding. Hit me up, Miller Lite. <laughs> Bro, you mess around with me to get a sponsor. <laughs> Go ahead, T. Hey, I have a quick for T. T, how how rich is your mama gonna be? How rich are you gonna be? We'll be so damn rich. <laughs> Love it. So fucking rich. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Love it. Exactly. The dude has spoken. Good man. Good man. <laughs> We're gonna be so fucking rich. Holy <laughs> shit. Get the goddamn money printer out your own Paul. Peace out. <laughs>